It's so great to meet you. You don't even know. You're going to know in a minute because I'm going to tell the world, though. <laughs> Ain't worried. What's up, everybody? It's Jackie Ray with Nightcast Media. You already know how excited I am if you follow me on social media because I'm standing next to one of my idols right now. So excited for this moment. You always tell the truth. You always speak your truth. And no matter what, sometimes when it's even, it gets hard, you keep persevering. So how does it, how do you do that? How do you keep going even when everybody seems to come against you? Um, I'm too old and stubborn to know any better. I mean, I think that's a big part of it. And listen, this all comes with age, experience, um, and as you get older and as you feel more comfortable and settled into who you are, uh, you really, the distractions, what people have to say to you, it just kind of becomes white noise, right. you know? And so I was really lucky because um, I was able to get a lot of confidence instilled in me early. I always felt like I had a, a, a place and a belonging in this industry. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, realizing that there's only, the only people's, opinions who matter are those who sign your checks. Mm -hmm. If you don't sign a check that's in my bank account, why do I care about what you're saying? Exactly. Now, I also saw on Instagram the other day, you said your mom called in the ESPN <laughs> one time. <laughs> it, it, it. Can we get that story real quick? Well, I got a better story is when she okay. called the White House. Not oh. even kidding. It's that, you know, of course, a lot of people know about the whole controversy I had with Donald Trump. And when all that went down, my mother actually called the White House. And my question to her is, what did you think was going to happen on the other side of that phone? Did you think they were going to patch you right through? Like, what was... Right. What in your mind, how was this supposed to play out? But yo, you guys know how mamas are. Y'all know who black mamas are. Like, they don't play when it comes to their kids. Right. You've been in this business, like you said, for a long time. How important is black media, black journalists, and black voices? So I think black media is, is such the foundation of so much that we do as journalists. Um, when you think about even, I mean, it started before Ida B. Wells, but I just use her as an example. Ida B. Wells is because of her reporting, her putting her life on the line, that we understood the horrors of lynching and that we understood, you know, the white supremacy that was really facing our nation. And even now, when you look at how black media has covered some of the most important moments in history, when you look at how they covered the death or the murder, rather, of Emmett Till, when you look at how they covered the assassination of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr., like these are pivotal historical moments um, where not only were our verses heard, our pain, our trauma was heard, and that we understood the gravity of the situation with racism, institutional racism that we were facing as a nation. So uh, even now where I think people try to act as if black media is not important or that black media doesn't have a role in our, our society of journalists, it, it's really the foundation for so much that we do because Listen, uh, with the way media is shrinking, with the way we know in mainstream media, black folks, our community, our issues are not covered. The one um, uh, publication or media outlets that you can depend on is black media to cover these issues and to constantly shine a light about what's not being done and what we're facing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now you're taking your voice and I'm excited to CNN. You and, yeah. and Carrie are going over there. Yeah. You, how, what brought that a whole thing about? Um, you know, it, it was just one of those things that happened. And we started having conversations with CNN. Uh, of course, we had a wonderful run on Vice. And um, this is just sort of an extension of that. Uh, one thing about me, I'm going to keep a show with a close friend. It's just what it is, right? And so this is uh, another opportunity where we can be ourselves, where we can discuss pop culture, current events, news, like the whole gamut, sports. Uh, everything else. And uh, I think people will be really surprised because there's going to be some wrinkles in this show that they are not going to see coming. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm yeah, excited. I'm excited. Too. That's Nick Hamilton. I know he wants to ask a question. Oh, the first time I interviewed you and Michael Smith was oh. at the ESPN Humanitarian Awards. Oh. And so we have a show and you guys inspired our show. Oh, well, thank you. So we appreciate you. You always challenge my views on Twitter, which I'm here for it. <laughs> don't don't mess with Jamel. I'm no. telling y'all now. But what does it mean just to have that type of legacy, what you and Michael Smith had, had found, you know, the foundation of that, and then moving on with you and Carrie Champion? Um, so here's the thing, I mean, and I'm sure you guys can attest to this, is like when you're in it and you're grinding every day, it's like you don't look outside of that. Like you don't realize what you're creating until sometimes you're in the thick of it or to after it's gone. And 
I think for us, when we were doing his and hers, we had such a big chip on our shoulders that uh, Mike used to use this analogy all the time. He was like, sis, we selling tapes out the trunk. Like we really, that's that was our entire mentality. Like, yo, people may not love us, but the people who down for us are down for us. And because we had that mentality, especially creatively, because if we were going to not be a success on TV, we were going to not be a success under our terms. Like We weren't going to rely on what some executive in a corner office who didn't know us, didn't know our community, didn't know anything about how we relate to our audience. We were going to let them tell us who we were. So we were always going to be ourselves on TV because TV was something that we didn't have to have, that we could take or leave. And there's a lot of people who are on TV who need it who feel like I gotta be on TV every day. And so they wind up compromising these little bits of themselves until they look up and they're not the people on TV that they are in real life. We never wanted that to be our reality. So when we were creating His and Hers and when we moved to a sports center, it was very important that we always be us. That's why it wasn't hard to walk away. Nowhere in the history of ESPN will somebody have drunk a 40 on TV, <laughs> doing a boys in a hood skit. The, the, you know, the different worlds uh, intro yes, that we did yes. for Sports Center never will be done again. The coming to America, like any of those things, they never will be done again. And that's because we not only wanted to be ourselves on TV, but we took a sense of fun into it because yeah. this should be fun. Like we ain't saving babies from burning buildings. <laughs> we are talking on TV. Right. You know, we talk smack on TV with mm -hmm. our friends. That's what it is. <laughs>